What is going on everybody? It is Sunday. It's a beautiful day here in Southern California and I'm happy to say I'm in my studio, not in my studio. Uh, I'm not exactly where we wanted to be right now. We're at the base of, well I'm not quite at the base of, of San Diego Peak, but we're pretty darn close to the bottom of it. Friday I came up here wanting to shoot a couple videos up here. Uh, but the gate down below was closed. We recently had some uh, some weather here in Southern California, and Santiago's Peak is the highest point around here, and there's a little snow up there. As a result of it, uh, well, they shut the road down below, and so you weren't able to get up there. But I spoke to the fire ranger, or the park ranger, rather, uh, and they shared with me that uh, the gate would be open Saturday morning. It is now Sunday. The gate is open, but as I understand, it is closed up on top so our hopes and aspirations of getting up higher to where it's a little cooler because as you'll find out one of the items we're going to be talking about here is a diesel heater that is absolutely kicking ass but uh socal jeeps intercepted me on the way up here shared with me because they saw that i have my turtle back here and were kind enough to let me know that it is you can't get up to the top and so I'm at a first kind of turnabout here and I'm determined to put these videos together here for you guys today. So some cool bystanders, bystanders people driving by in a white four-door Wrangler. If you happen to be watching this, I didn't catch your names, but hey, um, they made some great recommendations of, might as well just film it here in this little turnabout here. So that being the case, guys, I'm going to be shooting two videos here today. Uh, one of Both of these are items that I've been reviewing for a little while. Now, a couple Eagle Eye fans of uh, four-wheel drive talk have noticed on some of my outings that I have this yellow case. Well, that yellow case is what we're going to be cracking open here first. That yellow case is a planner portable diesel heater. Now, it's uh, they make that in two sizes. There's a two kilowatt, which is a smaller, of course, and the four kilowatt, which is a monster. Uh, and anyway, that's what we're gonna be jibber jabbering here. I've been testing this thing out and this thing absolutely kicks ass. So we'll start off with talking about that and then we'll dive into the next item, which I'll put into a separate video. And I'll tell you right now, if you're interested in watching that, I'm not sure which one I'm gonna go first with, but it's this smart tent that is above my uh, Turtleback Expedition trailer. So that's gonna be the other video that I'm going to shoot here today. That's gonna to be kind of a first impression walk around of this new clamshell tent that is sitting on top of my trailer right now. So let's shift gears and dive into this portable heater. Okay, so here we are. And I'm gonna, before we get this video going, I'm gonna give you a fair warning here, see? I underestimated, technically, this is my second time up here on Santiago's Peak or on the way up here. And there's a lot of traffic going through and because people cannot get up to the top, people are coming down, stopping. And I've met, you know what's funny about this is what is really cool, and this just is a testament to just how awesome this industry is. I'm just parked here and I'm just getting ready to get set up to film this video here. And yeah, another really cool couple here in a four door, uh, Wrangler just stopped here, a Sandy and Yuka. Yuka, I hope I'm saying your name correct here if you happen to watch this video. But anyways, so everybody else watching this video, just give me a heads up. There's a lot of traffic coming through here. Uh, I'll try to work the video around people coming through, stopping and all that other fun stuff. But anyways, to get back over to it, we're going to crack open the back here and we're going to grab... Here is the beast. This is the planner. This is a four kilowatt diesel heater. This is a portable diesel heater. And so I'm gonna demonstrate how to get this thing set up and why for 2022, I have to say, this is my favorite Overland tool, gadget, whatever you wanna call it. I wouldn't say it's a gadget. I'm gonna say, like a lot of the other stuff here that we talk about here, Overlanding camping, when you have, like anything else, when you have the right equipment and the right gear, it can make a world of difference. And I'm not saying to get out there and enjoy overlanding and off-road uh, or, or, or camping in the wintertime that you need a portable diesel heater, but it sure the hell makes it a lot more enjoyable. Um, I, you know, there's a lot of people that will frown that, okay, that's just overkill. But 
When I like to, I, I use a, I head out with a lot of uh, various tents. I like the entire tent to be warm, not just inside the sleeping bag. Um, and I know that's really glamping, but you know what? It's for me and I, that's what I really enjoy. This thing right here that I'm sitting on right here, I believe these are using Pelican cases as well. I may be incorrect about that, but as you're gonna find out, it is a self-contained little magic box here. And so everything that you need to run this thing is right inside of this thing here. This pipe over here is the exhaust. You have the air intake over here, and then you have a fuel tank right here. And I can't remember the, the actual size of this here, but we're gonna flip this sucker around over here. Boom, and here is, we'll get to the wires here in a minute, but as you can see here, this is, I'll show some footage here of the, the two kilowatt unit that is in the front of my turtle back. So you can see there's a noticeable size difference from that being a two kilowatt, and this is a four kilowatt. Now, a couple things to keep in mind before we dive into the actual, you know, getting it set up and showing how it works and all that other fun stuff. And full disclosure, guys, one of the reasons I wanted to get to the top of the mountain here is it's a lot cooler. It's 72 degrees out right now, so technically don't need this running at all. But I wanted to put this video together because I've been using it enough now that I cannot wait to share with you guys. Um, I've always been hypersensitive in terms of which products that we recommend uh, and stand behind. And I wanted to be able to thoroughly test this thing out and I feel comfortable now that I have enough tests underneath my belt that I'm going to get in front of camera. I'm gonna share with you guys, this thing stinking rocks. It is my absolute, for, for 2022, it's my favorite little tool to come along. Now, a couple things about diesel heaters that you should be aware of. First off, the, they run on two different fuels, either diesel, which is, the, uh, which is preferred in many cases, or kerosene. Now you can, one of the things that I've learned the hard way is there is kerosene substitutes out there. This will not run on it. Um, and so I have, um, I've tried it. It doesn't run on the four kilowatts. So it's something to keep in mind. So if you're running, before you go heading out, when you're getting a diesel heater for the first time, you test it out at your home first. If you're putting kerosene in it, test it out at your home before you go heading out into the, the wilderness. And when you turn it on, like, oh crap, it's not working. Test it out at your home first to make sure that it's working and then head out. Um, and so there's a few things there, a couple things that you need. You need a fuel source, either kerosene or diesel. Now, one of the pieces that is absolutely critical about running a diesel heater is you need a good electrical source. You need a good 12 volt source. Um, and let me share with you. Now, these are, I believe, AGM batteries are preferable. They will run off of lithium batteries, which is what I have in my trailer here, but there's a caveat with, with running these off of a lithium battery. You wanna have a good quality lithium battery to run these off. Uh, these days, unfortunately, if you run onto Amazon, you'll see lithium batteries run from cheap to pretty pricey. You get what you pay for, and it, it, running stuff like this is good testament to that as well. If you have inexpensive, lithium batteries, that power is gonna kind of be popping all over the place and that is not gonna work well with these diesel heaters. So food for thought, if you plan to get a diesel heater, you wanna have yourself a good uh, lithium battery. If, if it is a lithium battery you're after, you wanna make sure it's a good quality lithium battery. Now, this is, the, this is what makes this thing so absolutely incredible. So there is the inside of this here. To seal it up, close it up. On this side, you have a number. <laughs> you have two connections here. So the, the operating of this thing is crazy simple. Okay, so here's what we're going to do here. Normally when I get onto location, if I'm using just the portable unit, and if I'm using this inside of a tent, um, I will go up to my engine compartment connect this to a good solid positive feed, connect this to a good solid ground feed, and then it is as simple as plug this into here. Now, for the sake of timing here today, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, as many of you know, I have a 
two kilowatt, which is the same connector inside of here. I'm gonna run it into here and I'll fire this up because another question that I get a lot of is how loud is this thing? And so we're gonna fire this thing up here today so you can actually hear, and I think I have a decimal meter here someplace. And so we'll do a baseline and then we'll fire this thing up and we'll have a good accurate uh, sound bite here for you guys of just how quiet this thing is. So let's grab I'm going to grab so as you can see here this looks very similar and they these guys really spend the time in putting all the wires in nice casing and it looks absolutely fantastic so I'm going to plug this into here which is going to give us a good solid there we go, and I'm going to plug this, this is our thermostat, plug this into the other. All right, now I'm gonna go get my uh, sound meter so we can do a baseline, so hold one minute. Okay, we're bouncing between 43 and 46 decimals right now. Uh, when, when I'm talking, we're up to 72 decimals. So we have a baseline. To fire this thing on, it is as simple as, let me get closer here. It's kind of hard to see. But we're gonna hit just this button over here. And again, that sun reflection isn't helpful, but this thing is now gonna I'm gonna get closer here because the mic's here so you guys can actually hear it on me. So now the diesel heater is going to go through its normal startup sequence. And again, I'm running diesel fuel inside of this thing right here. So at startup there, with this thing inches away from the box, we went up to 50 decimals. And that's just the fan getting ready to spool up. So normally what happens here, boom, this, is what then gets routed in, in gets routed into my tent or whatnot. So now what's happening is the fuel pump is bringing fuel into the the combustion area and it is starting up that whole sequence. So this thing is going to be running here in a matter of minutes. But while we're waiting for that, I'm going to share with you guys some little fun facts. So, you know, earlier today, I w jumped onto Google because I was kind of curious as far as the differences between diesel and kerosene. And uh, interesting. So here's a, here's a pop question for you, or pop quiz question. Which came out first, diesel or kerosene? Now, I'm sharing this with you because I just found this out this morning. I thought it was pretty interesting stuff. Leave a comment below. Now, if you said kerosene, well, you are absolutely correct. Uh, kerosene was invented in 1846 by a uh, Canadian geologist, Abraham Gelsner. And it wasn't until 19, or excuse me, 1892, a German scientist and inventor, Rudolf Diesel, last name Diesel, uh, he comprised, he, wait, for his, uh, so he came up with diesel fuel at that point for a compression ignition engine that he had invented. Pretty cool stuff. All right, I'm gonna get my mic a little bit closer here. So what you can hear is a, a click, click, a car coming behind us. 
So now you can hear that, that click noise is the fuel pump. So now it's getting a little bit more serious about the startup. You can hear a little bit more consistent uh, exhaust coming out. Now, again, while we're waiting for this thing to fire up here, uh, uses, the reason why I absolutely love this so much is, whereas my two kilowatt diesel he heater that is in the nose of my turtle bike, that's in a fixed position. So that's pretty much just use in my turtle back, or if I have a uh, hose I wanna be able to run from there into a tent that's close by my turtle bank. But with something like this, I can head out without my turtle back, and I can head out with just tents. I can heat the back of the truck. This could be used in boats, RVs, my garage, uh, you know, set it, the heat inside of my house in case of emergency. Uh, so this thing is extremely versatile. And as you can see here, it is really small and compact. So another question that I get asked quite often is, what is the consumption, the fuel consumption of something like this? So you're gonna burn about two liters of diesel uh, every eight hours or so. So which it's pretty efficient for what this is, and especially with the output of heat that this thing puts out. Now, this thermostat right here is actually, this is more their analog. As many of you know, inside my Turtleback, I have a touchscreen digital display where you actually can set 70 degrees, 60 degrees, 80 degrees, whatever you want. This is, there's just a dial on here. So you set the desired amount of heat that you want out of this thing on here. And so, which is pretty slick as well. So you can actually get it either or. You can get the digital more uh, the, the digital display with this, or you can get the analog. And I believe we are, we're running right now. Okay, so this thing is beginning to blow out some warm air. I'm gonna take another reading here. And incidentally, guys, I have this set on the highest speed. You can hear that fuel pump kicking in. Well, actually, that's more of the fan, rather. 65 decimals, and again, you can see how close this is to the unit itself. About 70 decimals right now. This thing is cranking up. This is as high as this thing will go. We're at 63 decimals right now. I'm gonna take a step, I'm gonna get about, I'm about five feet away right now. 55 decimals. So the largest noise, the, the most amount of noise that you're getting out of this right here is the exhaust. And when you factor in normally, when I'm on a campsite, I have this set away about 10 feet away from the tent. So actually, let's do that. I'm gonna step over here. And I'm down to about 51 decimals. So it's relatively quiet. Now, again, keep in mind, I have this thing cranking up as high as this thing goes right now because I wanted to be able to... I'm being quiet so you guys actually hear the actual noise that's coming out of this thing. Again, you can see how close I am to this here. My mic is right here. And I've intentionally had this thing as high as it goes, just to be able to play show and tell. Now, I very rarely will have it up as high as it goes. Now, I'm gonna, now something to keep in mind as well. A moment ago, I was talking about the, the importance of having a solid electrical connection. So wherever you hook that, make sure, if you have kids running around, make sure they are aware that they cannot step on this because if this accidentally, if the power source accidentally unplugs, you could damage the heater itself. So again, wherever, I've asked people, they, you know, can they use alligator clips? No, you wanna have that thing, your connection bolted down. So in case somebody accidentally 
rubs into it or alligator, alligator, <laughs> alligator clips are notorious for popping off. So you wanna make sure you have something that is just ironclad, it's there, it's not going anywhere. So while this thing's doing its thing there, uh, last weekend we were up at uh, Big Bear, we did a cold weather trip. Uh, it got down to about 16, 18 degrees at night. Now I went up there, uh, we had my turtle back, which my son and I were up in the SMR, the smart tent, um, and then my brother-in-law and their uh, and his three kids were in the Russian Bear Up Five tent, and they were utilizing. I used this on their tent. It kept that tent in the mid 70s, and again, it got really cold. Now, granted, the the Russian Bear tents are just amazing cold weather tents because you have the multiple sides but when you have a good heat source inside there like this it was they were snug as a bug all night now i only brought like a half a tank of fuel with me and so by 7 30 or excuse me 6 30 in the morning uh they had ran out of fuel in the uh the tent itself which kind of worked out pretty good because the uh the sun was coming up and with the tents being as dark colors as they are they heat up really nice and so the sun did the rest of the trick from that point on. I warned you guys earlier, there's a lot of traffic here. I'll do what I can to edit out most of the through traffic. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's pretty busy, which I'm actually pretty surprised. Um, but the first time I was up here was two months ago and I nearly ran out of fuel, which was an interesting story. I'll share that another time. So as you can see, this is not loud at all. Um, when, especially when you're inside the tent and so forth, you hear, it sounds like a normal heating or central air system that you would have in your home. It is, it's very manageable, it's very quiet. Uh, and best of all, it's a constant heat. Uh, so now to shut this off, the shutdown sequence is very important. All you're going to do is we're going to hit the same button that we turned on to begin with. We're gonna hit that. So now it's starting to blink. It's gonna start going through its shutdown process. Again, with a diesel heater, the shutdown process is very important. You can't just undo the power. You can't just <sighs> unplug things. So it's just pretty much the same as unplugging the power because you can damage the diesel heater. So you, the, the heater needs to go through a proper shutdown uh, sequence. And that's what it's going to do right now. So while this thing is doing its shutdown process, um, I've been wanting to, you guys have seen me talk about the two kilowatt, which is mounted inside the front of the nose of my turtleback. I absolutely stinking love it. Every time I go heading out, I get a lot of people drawn to that because it fits so well in there. And it's great because I just run. When I get out to location, I pull this high density uh, silicon hose and I run it up into the tent and it's perfect. Same thing applies when I get a location with the portable heater when I'm plugging into my tent. It is so darn convenient and it just takes. Now Grant, let's be real here. These things are not inexpensive. You want a good quality diesel heater, you're gonna spend some bucks. Uh, if this is your first video that you're watching of mine, you, last year I went up to Alabama Hills. We did a cold weather expedition uh, trip up there where I tested a inexpensive uh, Chinese diesel heater and it was a horrible, experience. The thing kept breaking down literally the first time utilizing it. Uh, it smelled, it was extremely loud. It was a hazard to run this darn thing. Uh, and so, and you get what you pay for. Diesel heaters, a good diesel heater that you can rely on is not going to be inexpensive. Uh, and so, <laughs> and so just be prepared to make a investment. What you put into it is what you get out of it. And so at the end of the day, the two kilowatt that's been in the nose of my turtle bag has been an absolute blast. It is one of the best investments in the in the trailer, uh, in my opinion. And then of course, this one right here, if you're tent camping, or if you don't want to have something permanently mounted inside of your, your trailer, if you have a trailer, get a portable unit, put it in there, you know, take it along with you as you need. And during summer months, 
you don't need it, so you keep it in your garage. By the way, I'm gonna put a link uh, down below to Planter Diesel Heaters if you wanna pick up one of these things or you wanna take a look at more information or ask them some additional questions. All right, guys, and there you go. This was a fun video to put together. As I shared with you, I've been wanting to put this video together for some time, but of course, I wanted to be able to test this thing, thoroughly test this thing before I made my enthusiastic recommendations or if I was going to make enthusiastic recommendation for this thing. So after utilizing this bugger here, where is it? Where is it? There we go. Boom. Okay. <laughs> now that I've been using this for some time and really have quite a handful of real world experiences. Well, wild here. Make sure I'm not stepping any coyote do. There's see some doggy landmines here all over the place. But anyways, this heater has been a blast to use, but now it's that time of the video where I'm going to do all that, or ask you to do all that YouTube stuff that is oh so valuable to the channel. So, if you found some value with this video, do me a favor, hit that like button down below. If you are currently not subscribed to the channel, friend, what are you waiting for? We would love to have you part of this family. And last but not least, smash, kick the bell, so therefore you're notified each time that we come out with a video just like this one. Well, guys, I'm gonna be shooting the next video while I'm out here, which is on this smart tent that is sitting on top of my Turtleback Expedition trailer here. Hell, I'm already out here, but I'm going to hammer out that one as well. So, you get out there, stay healthy, and find your adventure. <laughs>